Because the thing I love about this guy is he was so humbled enough to say, I'm not 100%. You know, that would have been us. We would have been half healed and said, I'm good, Jesus. I'm good with just seeing ministries. Because we're too proud to say, you touched me at the altar, Lord, but I'm still struggling with this day. here at Fuel Station. We thank God for you. We are here with the one of the, mo the, the most amazing people in Buffalo, New York, and we are so happy to be able to connect with you all. We are starting a brand new series here at Fuel Station Church entitled Pride, the Root to All Your Frustrations, and today is episode one, and so we are so excited because I am in the room with some of the greatest people on the planet and so i'm so honored so we thank god for you all in jesus name so we are going to go into the word of god so we're going to start this series pride the root to all of your frustrations and the theme scripture that we're going to take this whole teaching from is going to come from james chapter 4 verse 6 and many of you uh, have heard this scripture before but you're going to have to really uh, be patient with me with this because this is really going to speak to your heart in James, I just want to read the, the, the end clause of James chapter 4, verse 6. It says, God resisted the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Who in here heard that scripture before? Now, most people, we read that, but we don't understand that. I don't know about you. I do not want to be resisted by God. I, I can be resisted by other people, but not by God. I don't want that. Now, why is God so resistant to proud people? There's some scriptures all through the Bible that talks about pride. We see it in, we see it in Proverbs where he talks about six things that the Lord hate. And the very first one was a proud look. He hates it so much that he can't even let it dwell nowhere around him. So let's talk about somebody who we can learn from so we don't make the same mistake. So if you go back, if you read Ezekiel chapter 28 or if you read Isaiah chapter 14, you're going to hear about an amazing being by the name of Lucifer who was in the presence of the Lord all day, all night. Yeah. He, he was the most beautiful looking creature. He moved his wings and, and you hear E flat and F sharp. <laughs> As soon as he blink his eye, you hear a drum beat. He had all type of, 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 of different jewels. Just, just, he was the most beautiful thing. And one day in heaven, not on earth, this is how important pride is, because this did not start here on earth. It started in the spirit world which is something we got to look at because a lot of times we only deal with earthly things when we talk to people. But let's go to the root of this thing. He was in a place where he knew he wasn't God and he still had this crazy dumb idea that I want to be like that one. This is, in this is over in heaven. So he looks at him and says, I want to be like him. He did something right because a third yeah. left mm -hmm. <laughs> from heaven, from a perfect place. Mm -hmm. It was no corruption up there. And pride got up there and messed up some things. And it is because of what happened in Ezekiel chapter 28 and Isaiah chapter 14 that we now see James chapter 4. He resists pride because he's like, I ain't dealing with these Lucifers no more. Yeah. Mm. Now watch this. Now this gets even deeper. This is the introduction. Though. That's why this is episode number one. So watch this. So he gets kicked out of heaven because of pride, not because he was lusting after other angels. Mm. Wow. 
Because I know you think it's, lust is your problem. The root to your lust is pride. Come on. Yes, sir. Behind everything you are struggling with, every frustration you have, I can put my life on it. I guarantee you, you can trace it back to pride. I guarantee it. Pride is the root to every problem you are going through right now. Every time I bump myself in the head past the gate, it was because I was prideful. I hate to admit it in front of y'all, but I, I thought I knew what I was doing. That's a form of pride. Because it kind of sounds like this in Proverbs. Lean not to your own understanding. You know why he said that? Because you do have an understanding. You have one. That ain't his. <laughs> so this is why pride is one of the sneakiest things we got to watch. So it's the root to all your frustration. And the reason why it's the root to all your frustration, because it was the root of kicking Lucifer out of heaven. And let's talk about the first sin on earth. Eve is in a perfect state. Here come all of a sudden the serpent. Did God say you should not eat from this garden? Now watch this. You notice the devil didn't say, ooh, look at that tree. Mm, look how good it looked. He didn't do that. Yeah. He started talking to her about what she can be. If he's trying to keep you from being like him if you don't eat this. Do you know that he, if you eat this, you will be like God? Didn't he say that when he was in heaven too? It was that that made her then look at the tree and say, wow, that tree do look good. She walked past the tree for almost 900 years, Pastor Tim, and never got tempted by the tree. Come on. But the temptation came when he opened up the pride door in her. This may be too deep for y'all. I don't think y'all ready for it. <laughs> so when the pride door opened, now the lust of the flesh going to start popping his head. Now the lust of the eye will start popping his head. Because once you open that pride door. So the devil know if God go kick me out for pride. All I got to do is get them folks prideful. And God go kick them out too. <laughs> so his number one attack on you is your pride. And a lot of people is wondering why am I so frustrated? Why am I this? Why am I? I take open up all those layers of frustration. And when you go to that root, it is something down there that says, I can do this without God. There is people on their way to hell today because I can do this without God. There is people right now who already know God has already told them, listen, don't go left. And they still go right. And then when they go right and things will work out, they did say the devil busy. Yeah. The devil was down there barbecuing. He had nothing to do with your situation. It was your pride that got you messed up. So it's the root. Now watch this. Now this is, I, that was just an introduction. Y'all ready for the good part? Okay. Go to Mark chapter 8. Now this may be a little too deep for some folk. But I'm telling you right now, this is going to blow your mind. Mark chapter 8 blew my mind because we're going to, I just need to show you now, I, I use James chapter 4 because I'm always going to reference that scripture in this series because we got to get back to the place that God resists this thing, okay? So we don't never want to get to the place where we feel like that, um, yeah, my phone talking to me, yeah, 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 say whatever you say. <laughs> so we, we got to get back to the place where we understand what it looks like. So we can look at that thing in our life because a lot of things God want to bring in our life, but he can't because there's some pride operating. Yeah. So let me show you one form of pride. We're in Mark chapter eight and we're going to read verse 22 to verse 26. But look at the, look at what happens when uh, we don't address this pride thing. Raise your hand in here if you know you need to pray. Now, watch this. Raise your hand. Now, you now we, we're around holy folk. <laughs> Don't let, don't let that pride operate. Raise your hand if you skipped some days praying before. Why did we skip praying when we know we need it? Oh, you were too busy. You wasn't too busy to brush your teeth. 
So something in you missing your prayer time said, I don't need to pray. That's called pride. I can make this day without prayer. And that would be the day you start cursing. And then you say, oh, don't cover your mouth. <laughs> it, it, it came out because you did not humble yourself in the morning and say, if you don't fill me up today, Lord, I can't represent a I can't represent you if you don't be in here. I need to be filled with you before I walk out these doors. That's called humility. OK, now watch this. Watch what happened in Mark chapter four. This is Mark chapter eight. Verse 22, everybody, I hope you're looking at your Bibles with this. He says, and he come to Bethsaida, and there bring a blind man unto him, and besought him to touch him. Verse 23 says, and he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spat on his eyes, he put his hands upon him and asked him if he sought aught, saw aught. Verse 24, and he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. Verse 25, after that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up and he was restored and saw every man clearly. Verse 26, and sent him away to his house, saying, neither go into the town nor tell it to any in the town. Now, the reason why out of all the blind men Jesus healed, this is my favorite guy. He is my favorite. And I'm going to tell you why he's my favorite. He's the he shows us what true humility look like. The man is blind. Jesus comes to heal him. Jesus takes the man out away from his kinfolk and friends and 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 Shaquiqui and all of them. <laughs> he can get him away from any distractions, anything that's familiar, takes him way out there and says, and put it on the man's eyes and watch this. This is the part that's going to make me shout. <laughs> the man opened his eyes and he says something that's weird. He says, I see men. So he that means he already knew what men used to look like. I see men and then watch this as trees. So this story messed me up because who touched this blind man? Who touched him? He's one of the only ones that one touch didn't do it. Now watch this. And I'm glad Jesus put this in the Bible. Because the thing I love about this guy is he was so humbled enough to say, I'm not 100 percent. You know, that would have been us. We would have been half healed and said, I'm good, Jesus. I'm good with just seeing ministries. Because we're too proud to say, you touched me at the altar, Lord, but I'm still struggling with this thing. But we're too proud. We don't want to go to the Lord and say, Lord, listen, I know I've been saved for 20 years, but I'm still struggling with this thing. That's called proud, pride. That's why people are still struggling. Jesus, this guy says, Jesus says, can you see now? And the guy was so humble that he said, I do see men, but they don't look like men. I see men as objects. <laughs> you want to know why people are being abused today? Because the person who's abusing them see them as an object. You want to know why there why so many people are struggling with pornography and all this other stuff because they've seen people as objects. Mm -hmm. They don't see men clearly yet. Mm -hmm. And the man could have said, if I tell Jesus that I'm not healed, Jesus may be mad at me. So I think all of us in this room would have said, okay, God, I'm good. You don't have to touch me again. I'm good. I'll, I'll just stay stuck seeing people as trees. But his humility said, wait a minute. <laughs> I don't see men as trees. And the thing I love about Jesus, Jeremy, is that Jesus didn't get mad at him. The scripture says he gives grace to the humble. 
And because he was humble, Jesus gave him grace and touched him again. And then his eyes opened on the second touch. Because I know we all like the first touch, but sometimes. <laughs> so there's a lot of people who are still living today with only one touch. And tonight God says, your pride, put your pride down so I can touch you the second time. Because if you put your pride down, you may just start seeing clearly. And the only problem is that the last verse, the scripture says, Jesus told him, don't go back to that place you were at. He said, go home, but don't go that way. You want to know why he said that? Because now you see things clearly. You go go back to that, to, to Uncle Benny, uh, the guy you was dating. And you're going to be like, you, you was who I was with? I can see you clear now. <laughs> I can see. I was about to marry that. I was about to make an investment in that because you're clear now. That only comes through humility. And prideful people will be so stubborn. They're, do you know what? And every passenger here, y'all know this is true. You know how people will come in into your church. And you know you're saying what God told you to say. I, I, I know you, <laughs> you, you. You know you share with God. And the people still, even though you, the Lord came with, in, with, with 20 angels to confirm it, and they still will leave there and act like you did not hear from the Lord. They won't apply nothing. I know Bishop Sweat has experienced that. <laughs> Taught people in... Don't do this. The Lord said, don't do that. And they do the opposite and then get mad at Bishop. And then they say, well, the, something wrong with the Bishop. That's that person's pride. God is resisting them. So now they, their finances can't grow. Their marriage is falling apart. And then they get mad at the Bishop because they say, well, you ain't preaching right. It ain't, it ain't him. It's your pride. You okay, get in touch one time. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm being honest with you. I've been in this thing for a long time, and I'm going to tell you this. And I thank God for my brother, Pastor Tim, and, and April, because Tim knew me back in the day. And I'm going to tell you, I, I've had seasons in my life, it's definitely in the earlier part of my ministry, where I'm going to be honest, I, I was living off of one touch. I was functioning, but it was a one touch function. <laughs> I'm like, man, I'm still seeing things like trees. Now, the revelation with this, now, now I, I pray that y'all understand what I'm about to say, because I'm a very, I like to make sure you see it. S three people in here, tell me three things you do to trees. Prune them. Water them. I mean, think of a big tree. Climb. Cut them down. And what, what, what else? Oh, so I, I know y'all trying to be nice, but all the brothers in here know what we do with trees when we got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> y'all trying to be all holy. Cut, clock. Listen, y'all, when you got to go to the bathroom, you go to that tree. You, you stop. <laughs> now, who in here, raise your hand if you want people to cut you down. Go to the bathroom on you and climb you. Raise your hand. So the next person who walks up to you say, hey, can I have your number? Or, hey, can I be your friend? Just make sure that person got the second touch. Because if they didn't, they trying to see how they go climb you, cut you. You have the majority of the people is living on one touch. And you know it's one touch because when you leave here, you, the struggle come right back. That's how you know it's a one touch. But when he said clearly, the man was so clear that they were men that when he saw them, he was, he, watch this, he was able to identify man, man, cat, dog, everything he knew, everything in its purpose. So we only abuse things we don't understand. 
We only abuse things when we see them as objects and misuse them. So this is really the issue. So most people, they're, why am I frustrated with my money? Why am I frustrated with my spiritual life? Why am I? You're, you got pride in your heart and there's a resistance taking place. And I promise you, every argument, every disobedience, you trace it back. Pride is at the bottom holding it up. And all God is saying is, if you really don't want to deal with that pride, ask me for a second touch. And only the humble would ask. Because even in this atmosphere, there's going to be some people saying, I'd rather leave with my one touch. Wow. No one is one. I'm still, because I don't want the person next to me to know that I got, that I still see them as a tree. I don't want that person across the room to know that I'm speaking in tongues and I'm still addicted. Jesus. I don't want that person next to me to know that I have been going to church for 30 years and I am still so emotionally unstable. So when Jesus said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly, what he is saying is, I'm coming to give you how many, ever, many touches you need to get clear. And a lot of people, a lot of people is too prideful to admit it. So tonight, in episode number one, I just wanted to start the series off by sharing the story that this is why I love the blind guy, because he pretty much said, you know what, I'm going to be honest, I'm not 100%. Wow. And I'm a, I have to be transparent. The moment I became very honest with God mm -hmm. about what he already knew what was in my heart, it seemed like it was so much blessings, Kathy. Yes. There were so many things that came in my life. And I'm like, why do I feel more of his presence? It's because now there's no resistance. Yeah. Imagine getting in the tub and you turn the faucet on and you're getting trickles. That's a sign something is blocking it. Yeah. And for the believer, if you talk about I don't feel the presence of God, maybe there is some pride that's blocking. Mm -hmm. God is not up there talking about I don't want to bless. God is trying to bless us. It's us. I don't got time to pray. You're crazy. <laughs> crazy people don't pray. Happy, joyful people. Listen, crazy people go through stuff. Joyful people go through stuff. Poor people go through stuff. Wealthy people go through stuff. So listen, everybody going through. All right. So since you go go through, you might as well listen. He says, I'm the vine. You're the branch. You're I just love five because he says, I just want you to know without me, you can do no thing. And we are still trying to do something without him. That's a pride. That is why I can tell you right now, lust is not your problem. Watch this. This will really blow your mind. What would make somebody want to take somebody else's husband or wife? You think... They want to take them because they look good? Nah. Mm. If I can take that person, it boosts my ego. Mm. Ooh, that sounds like pride. Now, the person look good, it, it, it adds on top of that. But that's not the reason. <laughs> it's that competition. So people keep talking about lust of the flesh, lust of the flesh. The lust of the flesh comes because of your pride. The lust of the eye comes because of your pride. Eve proves it. Eve walked past that tree every day. She, kept, she, she was just walking past it every day. So the looks, it, she, she, it was always looking like that. Right. She was just walking past it every day. Just, if it was the looks, she would have, on the first day God would have made her, she would have done like this. <laughs> <laughs> if it was all looks. Right, right. So looks ain't your problem. It's your pride. Something in you says, if I get that, it's going to make me feel Mm. Wow. That's pride. Yeah. Now the, those triggers kick in because it's being driven by your ego. Mm. Who got the biggest church? Pride. Right. <laughs> How many members at your church? Pride. <laughs> That's foolishness. Yeah. Why would you ask a pastor that? How many members you got at your church? Who ain't they, they your members? <laughs> That's why every pastor has in his place. I think all, these are, I have to honestly say, I am sitting around some of the greatest men of God. Let's put our hands together for them, because they are, 
they are amazing. I have never, ever, I, I, I have never, ever heard any, not one of these pastors say, how many members is at your church? You know why? Because they are so caught up about souls. They are so caught up about doing God's will for their life. They, now, I have met some that when they saw the flyer up, that the, how many you got, Doc? Huh? <laughs> like it's a, how many you got? Like, like what's, what kind of, <laughs> but what I'm trying to say, that's, I don't wonder, I, this is, it shouldn't be about that. I'm like, if it's two folk, I'm happy. Me and my wife was like, God, you give us two? That if we all in one accord? I'm good. I don't care. I don't care. I'm done. I'm so done with numbers. Uh, that's why y'all see, listen, I'm done. I'm, I'm just, this is too many people dying and going to hell for all this foolishness. I, we got to help people make it to see Jesus, okay? There's like just, and as we are here t taping, there's probably like 1,100 people who just got killed in our state before we walk out this door, 1,100. In our state, in our country, and we have, and we're talking about stuff like, well, uh, man, doc, you know, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna build this. Listen, Listen, I don't want pride in my life. I'm done. I did it. I used to be a very prideful young man. I'm being, I, I was so prideful that it, it just, it got me in a lot of trouble. I used to do stuff, and I was, I would, I would do stuff, and then I would acknowledge to God. I would I would I would do everything first and then I pray. I would, um, you know, read everybody else's book, then read the Bible. And then when my spirit wasn't growing, I started saying, man, why is it so hard? And God was like, listen, I want to bless you. But there's a resistance there because of your pride. God, pride is the meanest thing. I'm telling you, it is the root to every frustration. That you're dealing with. I don't care what area in your life in. If, if whatever category right now that you're sitting there saying, man, I want this to be better. I promise you, spend some alone time. Watch the Holy Spirit surface something in the area of pride. Wow. I promise you. I put my life on it. And the moment now, this is what my morning sound like as I get ready to finish. My morning sound like this. Every time I wake up in the morning, I wake up and I just say, Lord, I thank you so much. And I spend my time with him. And I say, Lord, if there was if there's anything in my heart. That has displeased you, Lord. Please forgive me. You know why I'm saying that? Because prideful people don't think they're prideful. Yes, sir. And sometimes he sees something that we may not see. Right. I'll end with this, and because I know many of you may know. Why do y'all think you have two kings? One man disobeyed God. And God rejects him. Just no, you're not you're 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 rejected. The other king commits adultery, kills the man's wife, <laughs> and then when he gets confronted years uh, a year later by the prophet, that man needed to be stoned and killed. Why did God keep man number two and reject man number one? Somebody tell me. Oh, could it be that both of them had some form of pride going on? We saw it in their acts. But watch this. At least number two said, can you touch me again? Yeah. Wow. I, I, I don't see clearly yet. Wow. Number one said, can you restore me in front of the people and let them know I'm still king? <laughs> That's why he's rejected. So I know you think you're being rejected because you, you got some little secret stuff. The thing that's causing you to be rejected is pride. Who in here would like to get a second touch tonight? Everybody who would like to get a second touch, I want you to stand up and lift up your hands before the Lord. And I want you to just worship God right now and just ask the Holy Spirit to touch you again.